the following is a is a tutorial. Um, David Rosna and Aswin Vijaya uh, went to Telemetrics on Good Friday to pick up the uh, camera system. And the camera system is a, a new robotic camera system. It comprises of the this HDSC one. That's the that is the camera. This is the camera. Is the HDSC one, and um, and this is mounted on a on a pen tilt head. On this pen tilt head, this is the the pen tilt head. Um, it's a new pen tilt head. It's a compact bundle head. It's called a PT CPS4. This this uh, is made by Telemetric specially for for compact cameras. And this is the the third device. Uh, that is the RCP, the the new robotic uh, uh, camera control. And uh, it can control 16 camera, and you can select uh, each camera there. So this uh, RCP will will be able to control all the cameras that we have and you will see the some um, uh, tutorial videos after this and um, Mike uh, Cuomo will be the engineer from Telematrix will be telling us about the, all this equipment thank you sure just keep talking it's okay sure so um, this right here this is Mike <laughs> <laughs> um, this this GUI right here is the same as you guys will have on, on your RCP. The only thing is I don't have the uh, RCP panel right here. But along the top here we have the camera numbers. So right now it's called camera one. Sure. To change that I can go over here to the system setup window. Mm -hmm. I click on this and then this gives me all the settings for all the cameras. So if you guys had multiple cameras or down the line if you decide to add multiple cameras along the top here you can choose different cameras so camera one two three four all the way up to 32. Mm. so we happen to call this camera one but we could call whatever sure. whatever we'd like the um the pan tilt is going to be the compact so from the drop down we're going to pick pt you know we have multiple multiple pan tilts that, that act the same mm. so there we have an hp our high performance head the compact which is the one you guys have and then an LP, which is a large, a large one. So, so the PT CPS4 is the you call it compact here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the CP is the is for compact. Okay. Um, and then uh, the camera is the HDSC camera. So we have yeah. we can control different cameras. So you'll see a whole bunch of different cameras here in the drop down: Sony, Panasonic, um, and the one we're going to choose is the HDSC. And then down here, we're going to put in uh, the IP address for the camera, or for the pan and tilt rather, and the port number. So the port number is always going to be 3001, which is what it'll default to. Um, and then the IP address is whatever the IP address of the, of the pan and tilt is. And I will show you guys how to change the IP address of the, of the pan and tilt. So the IP address is now is 10, is right. 10 0 1 2 9. Yes. Um, is that through a router? Do you, you have a router or what? We have a little executable actually, I can show you right now. Um, it's called... We have this program called DS1 config. Mm -hmm. it's, we made it, it comes up. What you do basically, you just hit search. Uh -huh. And as long as you're on the network with that pan and tilt, it'll find it. Okay. So we can see here, there's actually another, another pan and tilt on the network somewhere else in the building. Okay. Um, but we're this top one here, this 10.0.1.209. Okay. And then basically to what we do, it says right here, the camera, no the camera name is the HDSC cam. We would just click on change IP, okay. type in the new IP address and hit OK. And that's it. Okay. So, so, so what, very what, easy. what tool is it? Uh, this is called DS1 config and I, and I will give that to you guys. Uh, DS1 config. Yeah. That's to config the the multiple IP, uh, multiple to, to cameras. Change, uh. Yeah, to, well, to change the IP address of the pan tilt. Mm, okay. okay. Yeah. And those IP are static IPs, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now we, we set up the pan tilt to be um, an IP address similar to this one, a 10.0.1 something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the controller is also a 10.0.1 something. Mm -hmm. So as long as you don't need to change that, if you're going to hook them up directly with an Ethernet cable, um, then uh, you don't need to change anything. That would just be if you want to change it in the future. Okay. Okay. 
um, and then over here this would be if, um, we have different axis directions so let's say the pan tilt would be mounted upside down we can flip the direction of pan or tilt oh, okay. or anything else and then over here this is video routing if you had a black magic video switcher we uh -huh. could control that but again that would be if you had multiple cameras in the system and you wanted to switch the videos for the different cameras so uh, let's say you had one we had one monitor like we have one monitor right here mm -hmm. and you had say let's say two cameras in the system okay. when you selected the camera in our software we would switch the video over here so that the video corresponded to the camera that you are currently controlling oh okay okay, okay. so we um right now on this panel we have implemented the black magic video switchers yeah so you'd have the uh you know the two videos going into the video switcher one output from that video switcher going into a, a monitor and that would be something we could control hmm. um, in our church we, we also use a uh, black magic uh, design um, is it uh, one me something like that um, the switcher is one me okay is it uh, are you using the same one at one me we are using yes. Yes. All the um, all the video switchers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Not not the television studio. The the one me. I think it's a little bit bigger than that. Okay. So. But it's not the uh, biggest one. So this is the we use the yeah, the video it's hub. It's okay. Oh, using video hub. Yeah, we we'll use the video hub. Oh, it's not a like a video oh, switcher. Right. Exactly. So. Okay. The video hub just takes yeah. in. Let's see, they show yeah, a picture of it. No, they don't really show a picture of it. But um, it's, just, it's just like this. You know, there's, mul there's 16 inputs or 32 inputs or 64 inputs and a few outputs. And we're just switching the video. Okay. So they're pretty cheap. Um, they're, I mean... 2000 probably. Well, One. Yeah, 1495. 49, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then we get, I think we, get, we may get a little better pricing than that. So if you guys are interested, let me know. Okay. Um, down the line, but um, yeah, yeah, that would okay. be if you had multiple cameras. And uh, so, so uh, again, uh, explain to us uh, how how is that uh, uh, controlling the or, or the the black magic design will control this through or we, we yeah we'll control the black magic design. So basically, oh. on there it's a sixteen input, sixteen output. Mm -hmm. So SRC is source. So for camera one, typically camera one is source one, camera two is source two. Mm -hmm. And then the destination t typically is always the same. So destination will always be one. So you'll take into the, into the black magic video switch, you'll take, you know, if let's say four inputs, cameras one, two, three, four, and then output one will go to your monitor. And that's oh. the video that we'll switch. So we'll say input one to output one, input two to output one, mm -hmm. input three to output one, you know, and then we'll switch it as you switch the cameras in our panel. So that way you're always, looking at the correct video for that camera okay H how about if the camera has a different setting um, like I think Blackmagic Design doesn't have a scaler inside right right so so you have to set either all 720p or 1080 right or th yeah or the video will look differently on the, yeah. on the monitor so uh, so here you cannot you cannot change anything. You you have to stick with one, one resolution. Yeah. Right, and because um, typically this, all the cameras on the on the system, you'd want to have the same, same, same resolution. Resolution, yeah. 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 Okay. Do you guys have other cameras at, at the church? Yeah, we have we have a, a one is BMW EX3. Okay. Uh, we said it's 720p. Okay. And then th this one is what? Is is this is 1080p? 1080p. So or 1080i. Yeah. So I have to. So are you planning on controlling the, the EX3 from from our control system? Not yet, but we are probably. Okay. Cool. Uh, but. Uh, oh, you got the demo going here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're sure. Coming coming into the, the Panasonic pan tilt and oh, okay. show camera controls with that okay. shading and all that. Yeah, that's okay. With you guys with that. Yeah, thanks John. Ca coming into the Blackmagic design, it has to be one resolution, like the same resolution, right? So All the camera. Yeah. So, so that means from here, 
I'll check on that. Let, let me check on that. Can can we can we can we use a 720p here? We cannot use. No, it just has. Um, so we have to buy a scaler. Let's see. It has 1080. Yeah, 1080p and um, 1080i. 1080i. Yeah. Um, so in that case, um, maybe uh, we, we should ask you what what scaler that we have to use to. Yeah, let me check. I will check on that. Let yeah. Me, let me write that down. Yeah. Because all our setting right now is 720p. Okay. So there will be a problem then. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'll check on that. So we can also tally the camera. Mm, okay. So on the front of our compact, we have a, a red light for tally. Um, okay. And this would also would be the tally input. Uh, and then on the back of the RCP, we have a, a contact closure interface, a USB contact closure interface that would um, that would allow us to tally the cameras. Okay. Any questions on, on here? Um, one other thing is along the top here we have cameras and then we also have um, video router stuff which I'm going to add some more stuff into here for the video routing stuff. Um, and then we have some of the joystick settings. This would be if you're running the software on the, on the um, the PC or if you wanted to change the joystick for everything. So let's say some operators like the tilt to always be like an, like an airplane, mm -hmm. inverted. That's how you would do it. You would check this box here to and invert it, oh. invert it for all oh. the cameras. So oh, th sorry, this is global. The, uh, the panther head upside down or, or... Right, so we have two oh. ways to adjust that. We have the camera setting here. Mm -hmm. So if an individual camera is mounted upside down, you would do it here. Mm -hmm. But if the operator likes inverted airplane mode, mm -hmm. then you would do it on the joystick settings okay. so that all the cameras would be that oh, way. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then um, here's the, just the tally, and this is the enable for the tally. And then down here along the bottom, we have the tally here for all the 32 cameras. What is so tally? Tally for? The red light. Ah, the red okay. Light. So okay. let you know that that camera's on air. Okay. It's on air, yeah. Okay. yeah. So that, that would be coming from the video switcher that would tell us that that camera was on air. And then, then these would turn red. Whatever camera was on air would turn red down here. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use it uh, at, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, then down here we also have some more status. This right here gives you the camera number. So this is, this is the camera number one. So that's the number that you choose here. So if you make, um, let's say you have other cameras in the system, you know, you'll have camera two, three, and as you select different cameras, the cameras will come up. So as I select, say, let's say camera two, uh, seconds. Um, is it the, the, the VB, VB language or what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, VB.net. Mm. Um, this, um, the, the graphical interface here will change for the camera controls. So if I add in here, Let's say the Sony 700 protocol for let's say the EX3 camera, and we select the camera. Um, then the then this this interface here will change, so you can see that's different than the HDS than the um, other camera controls. Oh, okay. So, they so look as different. as you select the a particular camera. Then all the characteristic of for that camera will, will exactly will only show exactly that it, whatever is not relevant that it will not be shown here exactly correct. Let's fix this back to uh, okay. <coughs> okay now um, as you notice as I switch the cameras, the this light down here will turn from red if it doesn't see any camera mm -hmm. to to green once it gets feedback from the camera. So mm -hmm. as long as this is green down here, mm -hmm. we know that we are sending and receiving data from that okay. from that camera. Okay. Um, also here, this tells you the PTHP compact, so lets you know which pan tilt is mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. And then the HDSC, this is the camera mm -hmm. that's on there. Now, if you had an aux axis, that would be an elevation column or a, oh. or a, you know a track or something. That would be here as well, and that would turn green to let you know that we are talking to the aux bus as well. Mm -hmm. And then last, this is the version number. So this is revision 1.124.
No, sorry. Uh, first, uh, you have to select the camera first. Can, can you, can you right. show us how, yes. how to select the camera? So when you first start the software, um, there'll be there'll be no camera. You want to be a little. There'll be no camera selected, mm -hmm. um, and then when you select the camera, then um, you'll see the, the graphical interface here will change, and you can pick different cameras from here. Okay. So along the top here are the different different camera selects. Okay. Now this one is camera one. Camera what? Yes. Camera. Okay. So you'd select camera one, and then let's say camera two was the EX3. Mm -hmm. You'd select camera two. It says Sony 700 down here, and then this mm -hmm. is the Sony camera controls. Oh, so okay. we have all the camera controls here for the Sony's. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we have some other miscellaneous controls here. Yeah. If it's there are the some trolley or whatever. Yeah. Right. Weatherproof pan tilts sometimes will have washers, wipers and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's the bottom here. And that's the um, the camera select. So right now 17 to 32 is grayed out because by default we have 16 cameras in the system. Mm -hmm. Next thing down is, is scenes, and these are scene files. We have four types, four scene files, mm -hmm. and scene files will store everything that you see here in a scene, just like with a hard panel. Mm -hmm. And um, then what happens is you can then recall that scene. So if I wanted to, to adjust all these, these parameters here, and again, I have to tweak this a little bit more for this camera, but if I were to adjust all the, the settings here, and then hit save, and save it as, as a scene file, I could then recall that scene file and all these parameters would change. Mm. Change for that. So if I, um, let's give us a quick test. So if I, were to, I adjusted all those settings here and I'll save it in a second scene file, scene file two. Dave, you're getting rack mount, correct? Sorry? R rack mount for your seeking? The yeah, yeah, uh, rack mount. We do that rack mount mixed with test mount, so I have to go fix that. Okay. So it's a good thing you're doing it there. Okay. okay. Um, so then if I make the change to the settings, and then I click over here and I click call, it will adjust the settings here back to where they were before, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. I call the other scene file. This is back to 24, 462, you know, 207. So it'll adjust, it'll remember all the settings that we have here. Oh, scenes is the scene setting file. for the camera. Yes. It's all not the, the position of the background. Right. Those are presets. Those are presets. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we call those presets, mm -hmm. which are the next thing down here yeah. along the side. And scenes are just these CCU functions. Uh, this is CU, okay. Yeah. So those, good, are, good. those are the scene files. Now, next thing you down. You remember that as we do. So, so the scenes is for the camera yes. setting, and the presets is for the mm -hmm. location, mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Next thing down is the presets. We have two modes for presets we have cut and fade. Cut will move the pan tilt as quickly as possible to the position. Oh yeah. And fade will move to that position slowly. with a time parameter. Exactly, slowly. So underneath fade we have this yellow box here mm -hmm. and it says four and seconds. Mm -hmm. That is the time parameter. So if I'm in cut, this is grayed out. If I'm in fade and I click on fade again, I can change that four seconds to be any number I want, one to yeah. forty four. So I can make it thirty, now it becomes thirty seconds or ten seconds. Yeah. Five seconds, so um, that number gets adjusted. So four seconds to to reach the new position. Exactly. From mm -hmm. whatever position you're currently in to the new position. Mm -hmm. That's the time parameter that um, yeah. that it will take. Then next thing down we have call and save. Call and save are, are the actual presets now. So these are these were the preset modes, whether you want to be in the cut mode or the fade mode. Mm -hmm. And then these are the actual presets. Mm -hmm. So if I want to store this current position that I'm in as a as a preset, I would click on save. Mm -hmm. And which I, one, yeah? I would click on whatever one I want to save. So if I want to save it says position one. Okay, that preset is corrupted. Alright. So there you go. To recall I, I is had, to call uh, is it the, the call is, is to recall? Yes, exactly. So hmm. let's say I want to save this position as position one. And let's say I move the pen and tilt. Now you guys will have the joystick. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, for right now, because I don't have the joystick plugged in, we have a backup joystick here. It says joystick down here. Yeah. So they click on this on this arrow, it'll pop out. 
Mm -hmm. I click back on the arrow, it'll go away. Mm -hmm. So I can use this joystick right here, it's a virtual joystick to move okay. the pan and tilt around. Oh, okay. So let's say I say this is my new position here. Yeah. Uh, I can say this as a, another preset, let's say preset two. And then I can call preset one and moves to that, that position and the pan and tilt. And I can call preset two and it moves oh, okay. between the various presets. Okay, good, good. Okay. Does the preset also um, save the zoom? Yes, it'll everything? say pan, tilt, zoom, so and focus. focus. Okay, okay. How about iris? That um, I can add, I can add that to the software. We we've, we've talked about adding that to the software okay. and other control systems that save iris. Yeah. You so probably don't need yet. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. no, but yes, I I, that is on my list. So I will um, I will um, make sure that gets added. Um. And then along the same lines, this is this is pan and tilt here, and then this is the zoom rocker. I can control the zoom. Oh yeah. And then this is the um, if I'm in manual focus, this is the uh, the focus. Oh okay. So again, you guys will have the actual nice yeah nice panel mm -hmm. able to do everything a lot better from there. Mm -hmm. But these are just what I'm using for testing. And then this is the if you had a, a y axis, this would be how you control the y axis, and this would be the x axis. Um, so, let's see. Now, on the joystick here, we have uh, seven speeds, one to seven. And um, the faster, the higher the number, the faster the joystick will okay. move. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, as you move the joystick, it'll mm -hmm. move much faster. Oh, no. If you want to slow the, the speed down, just slow this down to say three, and then now the joystick, the pan tilt will move slower. Mm -hmm. okay. In addition to that, built into every pan, every one of our pan tilts, as you zoom all the way in. We will slow zoom. We will slow the pan tilt speed down so that you don't go flying past the target. So if you're zoomed all the way in on a, on a subject, and you want to be able to move nice and smoothly and follow that subject, the pan tilt will automatically slow down for that, so you're not flying past them. And as you zoom back out, you'll be able to notice you can move the pan mm -hmm. tilt faster. Um, okay. So now onto some of the uh, the camera functions. So over here again, you'll have a dedicated knob for the iris. So you'll be able to adjust the iris knob right from there, and oh, then what, all the iris, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, you can awesome. use you can always use the mouse or your finger to to <laughs> press on here and slide the slider up and down, which I'll show you from the panel. And then you also can use this plus and minus arrows oh, okay. to go up or down mm -hmm. one count if you want to go up or down one count. Yeah. You also can with your finger click above or below the the this the bigger the number is to open bigger yes and, uh, and oh, okay yes so the smaller is the 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 arrows will be s the will be smaller aperture is it aperture it's not yeah exactly here. so if I go to manual mode oh, um, nice. that's all the way closed and as open. I come back up it'll open all the way up mm. and then right now one of the other things I have to fix well not fix but I have to add to the software there's also so there's this, um, the ALC mode, which basically controls all the lighting uh, for the camera. So there's a full auto mode, mm -hmm. um, which will just adjust, you know, the iris and stuff like that. So then I notice that, you know, that iris doesn't do anything anymore. The iris is automatically adjusted. And then there's, you know, an iris priority mode, which will put the emphasis on the iris and will adjust the picture based on the iris. Then there's shutter priority, which will do it based on the shutter. Mm -hmm. um, there's and there's also the gain priority, which will do it based on the gain. Then there's also AGC and AI. So one of the things um, you have to make sure is that you know if you want to be able to adjust the iris, that you have it in in manual mode. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because if a uh, full auto, that means the the iris is adjusting by itself. Exactly. According to the lighting. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, on manual, um, on manual, you can have a what? What? What are the iris priority, gain priority, shutter priority? So that that will adjust that will adjust the lighting based on the iris, mm. or based on the gain, or based on the shutter, or you could say full auto, which takes into account all of those. Mm. So it's it's a slightly different different um, automatic modes, and what that's something oh, that's sorry. something that. These these parameters are something that um we're gonna have to, we're gonna finish the documentation on yeah and and we'll provide that to you okay. so we'll go in in greater depth um mm -hmm. as to what these modes do and how they function with the camera yeah um because those those are some of the other modes are still being defined 
yeah. but the iris mode, the iris priority, the gain priority, and the shutter priority, those will take an emphasis on the iris, the gain, or the shutter, respectively, and uh, control the, the lighting based on, on those. What does AGC stands for? AGC, I have to check on that to be honest oh. with you. Um, okay. okay, okay, that's okay. Yeah, then same with the AI, I have to check and see, because they do vary from camera to camera, mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm going to have to check on these two. Yeah. Right now, for the most part, I'm not even sure if they're implemented yet on the camera yeah. mm -hmm. because they don't they don't appear to do anything. Okay. So okay. the biggest the biggest ones are the shutter, the iris, and and the game priority, and full auto and manual. So for the most part, you'll probably either be operating in full auto, or you'll probably be operating in manual mode. Would be the two most common modes. Mm. Okay. okay. On focus mode, what's the diff what is the one push? So the one push would be if um, let's say so you have to be in, in manual mode. So if you're in manual mode, and um, let's say we Wonderful. go out of focus, and you click the one push, it will attempt to to come in and auto focus on that subject. Mm. So it'll be if you're if you're completely off on on the focus, and you want to be in manual focus, as opposed to um, trying to going to auto yeah, or trying to move the knob, you could just push. The one push and then and will, try to it'll try to, to focus in on the subject. Okay. Uh, How does it know which subject to focus? It's hard when you're wide. It is hard to it is hard to know. That's why people some people don't like autofocus because it it can be hunting. Mm. It can, mm. with, with any with any camera, it doesn't it doesn't really know. Uh -huh. That's why a lot of people will use it in manual and they'll sometimes use the one push if they want or just manually focus. So that's why you know, I would suggest just use the manual focus. Um, and uh, that that will take care of that. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but the, once it's set, we can we can start everything and on the presets. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yep. So if you if you adjust the focus, you can store that with the preset, and uh, it'll record that recall that focus position along with zoom, pan, and tilt with that preset. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, and then it's over here now to some of the the paints yeah. and the gains. These are the red and blue gains. So right now we're in, we're in auto white balance. So these won't do anything. But if we were in um, one push, which basically one push will do is it'll do a white balance and it'll put in, put it into manual paint mode. And then from here I can paint the camera. Mm, okay. So, um, but if I'm in auto, it'll just adjust the picture back and um, these won't won't do anything how does it know what is white it the camera is is sensing if it's in auto mode if you're doing the one push it'll basically take a white object and it will use that as a reference but how does it know that the object is white because the lighting can right change so typically what customers will do is they'll take a um, like a white piece of paper Okay. Like usually it's like a printer paper, sure, but yeah. if you have an actual chip chart, yeah. there is there will be a white board on there that you can use as a reference, and that you know is an absolute. Okay, and then the white. camera just have to go to right. That you zoom in on that on that and then that press object, the, the one, one push. push okay. It'll it'll paint based okay. off of that that box, and mm. that will be your that'll be your reference. Okay. That's most that's usually what most people do. They the white balance it, and they'll leave it. They won't touch sure. the red and blue sure. gains. Unless the lighting keeps changing. Right, exactly. Okay. And then that, that's something that you can store in a scene file. So okay. let's say um, if you have if you have different lighting for, for different days or maybe something in the morning, the lighting's a little bit differently. Yeah, you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> they made, made the lighting's different in the morning and then in the afternoon it gets brighter or um, that's something that you can store in the scene file. So you could just have a little post-it note. You could say scene file one is for the morning, scene file two is for the afternoon. Okay. And you can get away with that. What are these 3200K? Those are the br the brightness. Or? Those are other other white balance modes. So those are those are built in. So okay. the 3200K you can see is a little bit uh, more blue, and then the 5800 is a little bit more more of a red. Um, so those those are the, those are the temperatures: 32K Kelvin, 58K Kelvin. Okay. Um, so again, it'd probably be similar. You probably would operate in the camera in auto or or one push. Okay. Um, and then over here we have different video modes. So this is normal. We have bars, mm -hmm. more for troubleshooting stuff. Um, we have grayscale, mm -hmm. and then cross line, which this, this isn't implement, implemented yet either. But that would put a cross on the on the screen. How, how to use that 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 color that bars? Do you, do you know how to use that? 
Yes. What is it? So a lot of times this is this is used. Well, apparently we use it for to make sure we're doing camera controls. It's the easiest camera control to see. Mm. You know, if we're doing some troubleshooting, we're saying, oh, do we have control of the camera? Let's put bars out. Do we see bars or not see bars? Mm. Um, besides that, that's pretty much what it's used for. This, it, uh, you'll notice that you'll see this when people are trying to to adjust a monitor. So if I want to adjust the pic the quality of this monitor, I would put bars up and then I would say, mm -hmm. okay, well, the yellow, the white and the yellow say are too close. I need to adjust that, I need to adjust the contrast. Mm -hmm. these, these lines here are a little bit blurred. They shouldn't be blurred, you know? So, so that's how you would adjust a monitor. You'd put bars up and then that's how you would adjust the monitor. Um, and then this is also what, what a chip chart looks like. So mm -hmm. along the same lines, you would put a chip chart up similar to this mm -hmm. and then you would paint off of that and you would say okay well the red doesn't look like red you know it looks too pinkish so you would adjust the picture based on on that chip chart and then if we're in auto mode um, you have the auto red and auto blue because I'm gonna probably change this text slightly but these are these are um, so if we're in white balance auto then these are the these are the ones you can use to adjust the picture okay. Okay. so you can adjust you can use these um, but then, of course, um, these other these other ones here don't have any effect. So what I think I may do is I may take these two two knobs and put them over here, hmm. put them on top of here, and basically, depending on what mode you're in, okay. whether you're in auto or you're in one push, you'll see red gain, blue gain, or you'll see auto red, auto blue. Okay. So it makes it a little bit more easier for you guys. And typically, your gain is only red and blue. There's no green or. Typically, sometimes you'll see green, green. Most people don't use green, so a lot of times it's left off. Okay. Um, even on some of the high-end broadcasts, they sure, don't—they sure. won't implement green. And one thing we notice is sometimes the we can see the camera have a lot of like the, I think like the frequency is not right, so you mm -hmm. can see like you know lines coming. Like grainy. Down. Yeah. Okay. If it's grainy, a lot of times that can be the gain. Okay. If the gain is too high, it'll look, it'll look pretty grainy. Okay. Um, so that's something something you can adjust. Are you okay. Referring to me the no, ESC? no. Uh, what I think what what I mean is uh, like a line coming down, yeah, like like I think it's more like the frequency or something. So you can see like a wave coming down. Oh, okay. Interesting. No. <laughs> uh, and this is the EX3 camera. I don't know which camera is it. The uh, I think the, the center one. The center one. I think yeah. the uh, Sony box camera. Hmm. What I, what I would do is I would um I would plug a, a monitor directly into the camera as opposed to going through the transmission path you're going mm -hmm. through right now, and just see if it happens at the, at the okay. back of the could, camera. You're saying okay. it could be the noise. It, it could be some noise affecting the table. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, let me give you one of my. Let me, I'm sure you guys already. You guys probably have my information. Let me give you my business card here. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any have any trouble, let me know. Yeah. If you're mm -hmm. trying to troubleshoot this and yep. and um, you get stuck, shoot me an email. Okay. And um, I'll help you guys with that. So those are the biggest controls here, um, and then some other ones over here are gains. Um, and again, over here, it's going to be there's going to be two modes of control, either plus and either plus and uh, up and plus or, um, and down and you can go from anywhere from 0 to 24 DB and mm. or you can use the knob here and on the RCP all these knobs are selectable so if I click on this one see how it's blue or I click on this one how it becomes blue click on this one those then become the on the selectable knob so you can you can either click with your finger or you can use that, that knob to rotate through the control now explain again what is that R gain, B uh, blue gain, auto red, auto blue. Okay. So if you're in manual white balance mode, like in those one push mode, then then you can uh, use the red and blue gains to adjust the the gains. How much red is in the picture? How much blue is in the okay. picture? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, this is not recording. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was recording and then turned off by itself. Ah. Uh, okay. It's fine. Maybe it's. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah. So basically, uh, so you re you receive a code from from Sony, right? And uh, and then you interpret that code. Yes. Into, mm -hmm. Right. So basically, from here, where we take 
uh, the, the camera control data, we packetize it. So we put it um, in our packet that we sent to the pen and tilt. Mm -hmm. The pen and tilt receives that information, mm -hmm. it decodes the information, and then it converts that data to different ball rates for different cameras, mm -hmm. um, 422, TTL, and then sends that data out to the camera. Um, so on the pen and tilt, I can show you. Mm -hmm. So any, any other questions on on? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, you have the you have the Ethernet coming in here to the mm -hmm. bottom, and then you have the, the power coming in, mm -hmm. 48 volts, and then over here we have video on Genlock. So you'll notice that video. What is video? Video is the, is the video from the camera. Oh, okay. So it's not plugged in right now, but you can see right now how we have this cable going here to the back of the camera. Mm -hmm. What we also can do is. We from take, here to here? Oh, right, right, exactly. So, see how this cable goes from the from the camera here to this pen and tilt. Mm -hmm. We also can do that for video. So the video cable and the genlock. Video and genlock would come out of here. Mm -hmm. They would get plugged in into, into right here. And they would go internally through the pen and tilt and come out the base. Mm -hmm. This way, when you pan and tilt, the cables won't get caught. Because oh. if you have this cable here hanging down, yeah, yeah. And you pan, tilt around, it can get caught yeah, on whatever okay. else. So, so this will go here. Oh, Th this will go right here. Oh, oh yeah, just one here. Okay. Yeah, and then we can pull the video out from the base. So actually, let me grab. I'll show you. Okay, let me grab a little cable. That way, you have all the cables coming into the base. Oh, okay, yeah. The, so the base doesn't move, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's the yeah. So, and the then base just this top move, half okay. is moving. So from here, and then uh, and then we need, we need a, another cable. Just a little jumper, yeah. Jumper here. Yeah. That goes here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Same thing with the um, with the genlock. Oh, the box is back here. Um, gen. Yeah. So the genlock also we have the genlock right here. So the genlock would be another short little oh. cable that'll go from here to here. What, what, is, what is the genlock? I'm, I'm sorry, genlock, I, I didn't use it. Okay, so if you have multiple cameras, uh -huh. if you don't have the cameras genlocked together, meaning that the video is timed, oh. when you switch the cameras, you'll see a jump in the video. Oh, it's a, uh, yeah. It looks like, it'll look like, like, it'll, like a temporary roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's resynchronizing. So if you have them all genlocked, you won't see that. Mm. Yeah. So it has to, to go from camera to camera. So what you could do is. I mean, there are devices that actually genlock that mm. provide genlock and timing. That you, s you would plug them all into mm. that device and send them out to all the cameras. Sometimes what we do at, at some of the shows is we'll take the video, we'll down convert it to um, to composite video, mm. and send that back as genlock, mm. so that all the cameras can be timed off of that. But really, the, the proper way to do it would be to get a device that actually will will create a genlock signal oh, okay. and then send that out to all the cameras, and then all be timed based on that one signal. So this is the video out. Yeah. Uh, this is a HDSDI, right? Yep. HDSDI. Yep. Goes there. Uh, this this is the Ethernet, the Ethernet for, for camera controls for, and for camera so control and this everything. is the power. Yeah. And what is this for? That, that you, would you don't use it for this one. Right. You guys have serial I mean the Panto comes with either Ethernet, you know, and serial control, but you know, because you guys have the we have the Ethernet on here already, we're using yeah. the Ethernet now. So it's really more of troubleshooting if you needed it. But yeah, Ethernet uh, is is faster than yeah than serial. Yeah, easier to install too. And uh, okay, power from here, power from here. yeah, and then and, this and cable powers. This is the power portion of this cable. Okay, and this is the control portion of the cable. Okay, so it all comes out the one port labeled the camera. We also have the lens, a lens port on here. Mm. Uh, that's not currently being used because the lens is built into the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and but if you use a um, motorized lens, we use from here. Right. Exactly. If, they, if you have like a um, a Fujinon lens that yeah. goes with the EX3, for example. Yeah. Yes, we'd have a cable that goes from here to the lens. Okay. Yeah. And then the aux port on here would be again if you had a telepod okay. or a, you know a EP5 column or a track or something. That would that would be how you would control that. Okay. So it keeps it keeps it nice and um, nice and tidy that way. And and this one doesn't need a um, counterweight. 
for this pen tilt? No. No, the uh, the camera is nice and light, so it doesn't need it. Doesn't need it. No. But if if I if I want to use a a, a heavier camera, like the uh, BMW X3, mm -hmm. uh, you you also still with wouldn't a, with an external lens. Right. That would be um, you wouldn't necessarily need a, a counterbalance weight, but what you would need to do, same lines, is balance the camera on the pan and tilt. So you'd have to slide the camera back or forward. Um, you know, sometimes I'll use a pencil. Mm -hmm. You put the camera lens on a pencil, you can see where it tips forward, tips yeah. backward. Find the center of gravity and mount that right in the middle of the yoke here. So oh, there's yeah. the yokes yeah. right here. So yeah. it's right, right in the middle of this, of this round. We, we have one uh, BMW ES3, mm -hmm. but using a... Uh, okay. But, um, let me see. Yeah, I have one camera. But you, what you do is you click on it, it would turn blue, and then you have the selectable knob here. So the selectable knob here would then be used to adjust those those functions. Same thing with Master Black and Iris. So, um, th this, uh, what is, oh, this is Iris? Yeah, Master Black. Master, what, what is Master Black? Master Black is the, is the, the black levels. Um, okay. it's, an, it's a, it's, it's like a white balance, and this is black. Right. It's it's more like if to um, if you were if you look at the picture and uh -huh. let's say you know, my shirt didn't look black. Uh -huh. It looked gray. That would be the master black adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, and contrast. Oh, right? yeah, kind of like contrast. Yes. And what is selectable? Selectable is anything besides oh. those two. You can make. Oh. So. Um, you could make um, you know red gain, blue gain, any of these, any any other scroll bar, be a selectable knob. Oh, okay. So you would click on it. You like can this. you can adjust like this, but you can uh, like a software. Right. You can also adjust like uh, with the exactly with the, with exactly uh -huh. and um, because the really the the, so, the panel is meant to be used with just a screen, no keyboard, no mouse. So the up and down arrows are relatively easy to click. Mm -hmm. So those you can use your finger for, or See how this the, um, slide the slider, if you click above or below it, mm -hmm. it's also plus one, minus one. Mm. So you click above, above it, it's plus one, click below it, it's minus one. Mm. And then when you click on it, it'll highlight blue, and then you can use the selectable knob. And you also, yes, you also can use, I don't know if it'll work with, because the control's not implemented on yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Now you, yeah. But you also could, um, could click on the slider here. Slider, yeah. And move it around, yeah. But the easiest thing would be either click on it yeah. and use the selectable knob, yeah. or click above and blow it to increase oh, or decrease. A yeah, it's going oh, yell, yeah. to yell at you, but yes, that's how you would do it. You would click on it, mm -hmm. it would turn blue, and then you can use the selectable knob. Okay. Um, down here, as opposed to going up here and selecting the cameras, mm -hmm. you could do it from down here. So you have the camera select buttons down here. The four things down uh, on the side here, we have save and call mm -hmm. you also have cut and fade so you have cut and fade and call and save okay um and then you have the 16 shots you can you can save them Resets, as. yeah yeah hey aswin how about if you if you try to handle that mm -hmm. if you if you're comfortable to handle that yeah, sure. so um and then if not then you still can ask yeah. <laughs> let me let me Okay, so this is uh, so this would be would be um, optimal for the uh, EX3. Oh. Okay, so this will be the what, what do you call it? The PT. This is C the H HP. Uh, HD, huh? HP. High, HP. High performance. Yeah. PT HP S4. S4. Yeah. Okay, and does it need a does it need a counterweight? No. So you. How about if the if the external lens is heavy and on the on the front? That's okay. We, what we would do is I can show you guys yeah. is basically we just kind of take a pencil uh -huh. and then just center the weight of the mm. camera and the lens on the pencil, so okay. that you don't need any counterbalance. Okay. What what um are you using like a Fujinon or lens or? Yeah, I think it's a, like I a think BMD? it's a um, Panasonic. I think it's a, it's a BMW EX3 with the. Are you remotely controlling the lens? Yeah. Okay. Mo motorized lens. Motorized lens. Okay. Okay.
press and hold in that progress bar for a few seconds. Let, let me. And then it'll come to the screen. But I'll, we'll do this first, and then I'll show you how to get back into the screen. Okay. Let me, uh, Okay, you can start now. Okay, so this is the self bio screen. Um, and over here we have um, a couple of different stuff. We have the description of the RCP. You could you could change that if you'd um, if you'd like, but it's all pretty straightforward. You can leave that all the way it is. Down here we have some network settings. If you want to change any of the network settings in the RCP, we have the file explorer, which we're about to um, go through right now. We have, um, if you have multiple displays or you want to bring up the Windows keyboard, you can bring that up. Same with the device manager, the task manager, disk manager. They're mostly utilities that we would kind of walk you guys through if you ever need to use any of these things. Um, you can adjust the time and the date. You could adjust the firewall settings and calibrate the touchscreen. So if you plug this touchscreen to a different port on the RCP, you may need, or over time, you may need to recalibrate the touchscreen. That I will go over with you. So the biggest, two biggest things you guys are going to be interested in would be the calibrate the touchscreen and the file explorer. So first, right now, it's going to file explorer. This is where you would go to update the firmware. So as you can see, it detected the USB um, stick in the computer. So we open the folder up, right click or or uh, Control C, whatever you prefer. And then what we're looking for is you go to the C drive, the telemetrics folder, and then release. And you can see that there will already be an executable in there. You want to replace that? Yep. And uh, if you want, I mean, if you want, you can always do is call this old, mm -hmm. you know, to keep it as a backup in yeah. case something happens. Um, but because we're here, you guys are here with us right now, I'm going to delete the old one just so we don't. So, uh, but yeah. Okay, that's fine. Still open? Yeah, I st I um, I'm gonna leave it there for a second. I gotta fix that. I'll fix that in a second. Um, okay. So that that's um now the firmware is updated. It's all you have to do, and then you can click exit. And this is the progress bar you have to click on. I'll show you. So it's now rebooting. Yes. Yeah, just get your bike and the rest. I wouldn't even know where to get it if it is something that's the car should show in 466. It's been in the folder for a while, so you know. Okay. So it's smart enough to know where to look? No, there's a path there just now. There's a location. Oh, yeah. After the name, it asks for where the location of the executable is. So as long as we don't change the executable name, because I still called it Telesoft, mm -hmm. the old one was called Telesoft, it will just open up the new one. I saw a password. What is that used for? That would be used, um, we use that same BIOS for another one of our control panels, and that's more of a database-driven system, mm -hmm. so that's where you have a password to okay. log into. For the, now, it doesn't matter. Right, exactly. It's for the RCCP? Yes. No, oh, oh, yep, okay. exactly. Loading. Just, it's still loading. I'm not sure. This is a brand new build of the software, oh. so I'm going to make sure there's no. Maybe um, because you have a USB. So they have their mounting bracket back. You may have to take out the USB. Yeah, yeah. The mounting bracket is there. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They got it. So this is how the, the um, this is what the RCP will do when it first boots up. I think you have to take out the USB. With well, their old um, version of the firmware, you could hit exit and it would continue launching the software. Mm. This is the first time I'm trying with the new soft BIOS, so it may not um, it may not like that. You may not have to you may not be able to hit exit and launch the software. You may have to repower it like we're doing. So we'll see. Alright, so it's a copy for I don't have to need to take there. Hey John. When you update the firmware and uh, this is the progress bar you have to click and hold on. Um, do you have to repower the the software? Or can you hit exit and launch and launch right into the software? Do you always repower with Win Seven? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Usually I repower. You do. I, okay. I haven't done much with Win Seven yet. Yeah. Okay. So with the XP one, I would yeah repower. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, like I say, with that one takes a little while to boot. Hmm. This one looks like it's launching now. I see that.
do something with my uh, in, uh, in business. Let's see. Yeah, so now this knob turns blue and I can adjust the picture from here. Mm. Oh, so, so you, when you press that, it will turn to blue and then it, it will activate this control. Exactly. So if I, um, if I push on this one, oh, I'll have to fix this. Sorry, it's been, it's been, I've been trying to do this. I was actually working on this late last night, trying to get as much this done as possible for today. Yeah. Um, I'll have to check, I'll have to fix that. But right now it's staying locked on this first c control. But yes, what the way it would work is you would click on it, um, it would turn blue, <coughs> and then that knob is adjustable. Mm. Yep. So then you can move up and down one or two like this, or um, use this, or use the plus and minus arrows. So, okay. and then the iris is um, is always dedicated. So the iris is always this one. So you can be adjusting yeah. two things at the same time if you'd like. Yeah, iris dedicated. Yeah. Focus yeah. also dedicated. Yeah? Yes. And right now this this camera doesn't have master black, so I have to figure out what else I might put here instead of master black. Okay. But it'll go right here. Mm -hmm. So um, I, don't know, I, mean, I gotta figure out what else I may I may put there. That's a com very common commonly used function. So, uh, what is the gain used for again? The 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 gain introduces um, light more yeah. light into the into the picture, but okay. it also introduces more noise. Okay. So typically, it's always mm -hmm. better to use iris. But sometimes, like um, night, like at night, for example, like uh, security cameras and stuff like that, they'll bump up the gain a lot. And that's why you ever watch, you ever watch the news or something, you see mm. something at night and it always looks really grainy. Mm. That's because the gain's all the way up. That's what gives them the ability to look at night. So if the room's really, really dark, or there's a really dark corner in the church or something like that, where even with the iris all the way up, you can't really see what's oh. over there. Bump Unless up the you gain. use like infrared or something. Right, or you bump, bump up the gain. Bump oh, up okay. the gain to be able to see mm. more light. Okay. But then so then it becomes coarse. It becomes, it becomes exactly. The, if you bump it up too high, but you do, you can bump it up a little bit without adjust, without ruining the picture. Mm. So that's something you can play with. Um, <clears throat> so um, I'm going to give you the other software. If you guys um, would like to play with this a little bit, um, and any, you know, I, I do apologize. Some of this stuff still a work in progress. Sure. But um, since you guys are going to be here for a little bit, I'll go back over to my desk and I'm going to add some more stuff. Yeah. Like for example, under um, the gains, the shutters, the gains I didn't finish, so they're yeah. not, they won't do anything yet. Same with the shutters. I'm going to do those two things next. Because mm -hmm. um, those are the biggest things I want to show you guys with on the picture over here. Yeah. And then I'm going to put this on-screen display so we can see some of the data here. Um, but as you can see, the picture looks great. So. Okay. The shutter is the shutter speed, right? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm going to put in the ones that everything that's on here, I'm going to try and put in here real quick before you guys leave. Um, and then, of course, do you guys, do you guys feel comfortable updating, updating the sure, software? Sure. Yes. Um, pretty straightforward. So how, I long, will, how long does it take to pack this? Maybe half an hour? Yeah, maybe about, about a half hour, yeah. So mm. we could... Um,